Hello Grade 11s, in this lesson you will learn how to identify independent events and dependent events. And we will also show you how to use the product rule for independent events. Two consecutive events A and B are independent if the outcome of the first event does not in any way influence the outcome of the second event. For example, suppose that an event A is tossing a coin and event B is throwing a dice. The chance of getting a 3 on the dice, the second event, will not be affected by the chance of first getting a head on the coin toss. Events A and B are independent. This is not the same thing as mutually exclusive events. With mutually exclusive events, if one event has occurred, it completely excludes the possibility of the other event occurring. For example, the event of getting a number less than 4 and greater than 4 on a single roll of a dice are mutually exclusive. In general, if two events A and B are independent, then the probability of A and B is equal to the probability of A multiplied by the probability of B. Alternatively, we can say that the probability of A intersection B is equal to the probability of A multiplied by the probability of B. This rule can be extended to any number of events. So if you had independent events A, B and C, then the probability of A, B and C occurring will be equal to the probability of A times the probability of B times the probability of C. Remember, events are independent if the trial is repeated in exactly the same way and under the same circumstances. So the sample space is the same each time. For example, tossing a coin twice or many times will be independent events. The coin does not know it came up heads in a previous toss. Let's look at an example to reinforce this concept. A fair coin is tossed two times. Write down the sample space for the experiment. What is the probability of getting a tail on the first toss and a head on the second toss? Let H be the event getting a head and let T be the event getting a tail. There are four possible outcomes. You can get a head on the first toss and then a head on the second toss. Or a head on the first toss and a tail on the second toss. It is also possible for you to get a tail on the first toss and a head on the second toss. Or a tail on the first toss and a tail on the second toss. So the sample space is equals head head, head tail, tail head, or tail tail. These are equally likely outcomes as we are using a fair coin. The outcomes are independent since what you get on the first toss is in no way influenced by what you get on the second toss. With this in mind, we can answer part B of the question. The probability of getting a head on a coin toss is equal to the number of favorable or successful outcomes divided by the number of possible outcomes. This is equal to one successful outcome divided by two possible outcomes. The probability of getting a tail on a coin toss is exactly the same. The number of favorable or successful outcomes divided by the number of possible outcomes. This is equal to one successful outcome divided by two possible outcomes. It doesn't matter how many times you toss the coin. As long as it is a fair coin, these probabilities will stay the same. Now we can work out the probability of getting a tail on the first toss and a head on the second toss. From the sample space, we see that of the four outcomes, only one is successful. The events tail on the first toss and head on the second toss are independent, so the probability of getting a tail followed by a head is equal to the probability of tails times the probability of heads. We already know that the probability of getting a head is a half and the probability of getting a tail is a half. So we multiply these together and see that the probability of getting a tail and then a head is a quarter or 25%. If we look at our sample space, we can confirm that this answer is right. Only one of the four outcomes is favorable. Imagine if we were dealing with more than three events or a very large sample space. 
We need a method to solve probability problems by visualizing the outcomes. Let's look at another example. If a fair coin is tossed and a dice is rolled, calculate the probability of the coin landing tail up and getting a 4 on the dice. Tossing a tail and rolling a 4 are independent events. Let's start by establishing the sample space. The 12 equally likely outcomes are head on 1, head on 2, head on 3, head on 4, head on 5, head on 6, tail on 1, tail on 2, tail on 3, tail on 4, tail on 5, tail on 6. There's only one successful event, tail on 4, out of the 12 possible outcomes. So we could write down the answer straight from the sample space, but instead we will use the product rule for independent events to get the same answer. Let T be the event getting a tail on the coin, and F be the event getting a 4 on the dice. The probability of getting a tail and a 4 is equal to the probability of getting tail times the probability of getting 4. The probability of getting a tail is a half and the probability of getting a 4 is 1 over 6. Therefore, the probability of getting a tail and 4 is equal to a half multiplied by a sixth, which is equal to a twelfth or 8,3%. But now you should be able to identify independent events and use the product rule to work out the probability for independent events. However, you can also work out if events are independent by using the converse of the product rule for independent events. We know that if A and B are independent events, then the probability of A intersection B is equal to the probability of A times the probability of B. Conversely, if the probability of A times the probability of B is equal to the probability of A intersection B, then A and B are independent events. Now we will look at dependent events. Two successive events are said to be dependent if the outcomes of the first event have a direct influence on the outcomes of the second event. So the sample space will change after the first event. Let me show you what I mean. There are three dot balls and three stripe balls in this box. That means that there are six possible balls I could pull out of the box. If I pull a ball out of the box and don't put it back in, there will be five balls left in the box. This means that the total number of possible outcomes has changed. So you see, by not replacing the ball after the first draw, that has influenced the outcome of the second draw. The second draw depends on what happened in the first draw. For successive dependent events, A and B, the probability of A and B is not equal to the probability of A times the probability of B. In this demonstration, the second event will be restricted by what happens in the first event. We call this a conditional probability. For dependent events, we work out the probability of one event given that the other has taken place. We write this as the probability of B given A and calculate it using the formula the probability of B given A equals the probability of A intersection B, divided by the probability of A. We always divide by the event that the outcome is dependent on. So by rearranging this formula, we can see that for dependent events, the probability of A and B is the probability of B given A times the probability of A. Thank you for joining us, Grade 11s. Remember to look at the tasks for this section in the Using Probability Task video. You'll also be able to learn more about probability on our website www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn. A good grade doesn't come out of a lucky dip. It's a dependent event given some good study time. Goodbye.